Hello and welcome to Sierra Make. As promised, this week's video is the Red Soldier's Jumpsuit from Squid Game. If you remember last week, I made two different versions of the Soldier Mask, and so this week I'm making the jumpsuit to finish off this Squid Game costume. Let's jump in! Starting off with materials, as you know, I like to try and upcycle as much as I can. So here I have a old tent fly that is red, and I'm going to be using this as my fabric for the jumpsuit. I know it's red versus the kind of dull red pink that the actual squid game is, but I figured, you know what, it's close enough. We don't need to color match perfectly. And what's super cool about using tent fabric, especially this rain fly I have, is my jumpsuit will then be waterproof, so I can wear this as a costume, but also as a waterproof jumpsuit during the rainy season. Other materials you'll need is a black zipper. This one I have here is 24 inches, but the length of yours should go from the top of your neck down past your belly button, close towards the widest part of your hips. You're also going to want some elastic, and to complete the costume look, you're going to need a black belt, black gloves, and your mask. Per usual, materials are listed in the description, so let's get started. Luckily, I already had a jumpsuit that fit me to turn into a pattern, so I just traced it out onto a piece of paper. Now, I'm assuming you don't have a pre-existing jumpsuit that is your size, so instead, you could always use a pair of sweatpants and a jacket to get the pattern that you need. So like I said, I just traced all of the pieces of that jumpsuit onto a large piece of paper and cut it out. And then I took the paper pattern and cut it out onto the fabric. So let's go through all of the pieces that I have. We have a back panel and two front panels, a three-piece hood and a collar so that it is the same style as the show, a left and right sleeve, and two panels each of the front and back leg. Make sure you have a thread that matches your fabric color, and time to start sewing! First, we're going to sew that front panel to the back panel of the leg along the inner thigh seam. Here it is all sewn up, so then we will open up those pants like so, and lay the other side on top of that, which we also sewed up, and we will stitch the inside of that Y, aka the crotch area. Make sure not to sew all the way up to the front of the pants because you are going to put a zipper in that section. AKA, don't do what I did here and sew all the way up the front. I'm going to have to go back and seam rip that. Here's another look at the two seams we just did, the crotch seam and the inner leg seam. So now we're going to lay these down in their pants style. You can see it's already coming together and we're going to grab the back piece and sew the back piece to the top of the back legs. Next, we will sew the front panels to the back panel connecting along that shoulder. And now we have a nice open curve section to throw in the sleeve. Because I don't want to use pins on this fabric since it'll leave holes, I'm going to be using these clips to clip together any of the parts that are a little bit more difficult. So like this sleeve part, which goes along a curve, I'm going to clip it in place rather than pin it. Once both sleeves are sewn in place, I'm just going to bring down that front panel and sew the bottom of the front panel to the top of the front of the pants panel. Remember to keep the left and right sides separate because a zipper is going to be going down that center line. There's the stitch and you can see it's separated in the center. Now the basic shape is done, but before I closed it up, I remembered I wanted some pockets, so I cut out some quick pockets for either side of the hip, and I sewed the front piece to the front part of the pants, and the back piece to the back part of the pants, and then when I closed it up, I went up one side of the sleeve, down the waist, down around that pocket that I made, and then finally finished off at the end of the leg. Here's a look at it all stitched up. You can see up the arm, down the waist, around the pocket, and down the leg. And I end up closing up a little bit of that pocket just because I left the whole thing open. Just to make sure that my hand would be able to fit in properly. But you would probably close it up about halfway depending on the size of your pocket. Let's do the other side. 
Now that our jumpsuit base is all closed up, it's time to work on the secondary pieces, starting with the hood. If you remember, it is a three-piece hood with a strip down the center of it, and it's a little bit wider in the front brim area. So I'm just going to sew that strip to either side of the hood piece, and then hem the front of the hood to get a nice clean edge. There is our beautiful hood. Now we're going to attach it to the neck of our jumpsuit. Here's a glance at it clipped in and remember to make sure it's centered. And now that it's sewn in, we're going to add in the collar piece on the very inside of the neck. Here's just a closer look at that sewn in so you can see how it's done, the dynamic of it and everything. I'll also throw up a picture of the original jumpsuit so you can see why I added this collar bit and why I sewed the neck piece together like this. And it's time to move on to the next detail, which is the front pocket. So I'm just going to cut a 5x6 rectangle and also cut out a little strip for that little key name tag holder, I think, that's on the front of it. I don't know, I'll throw up a picture of the front of their chest and also the top of the pocket flap. We're just going to do a quick stitch around the flap and the tube, and then flip that inside out so that it's facing outward, and top stitch around both of those. Here is a closer look at that top stitch that I did. You can see how nice and pretty it looks now. Then we'll just put the pocket onto the front of our jumpsuit, starting with the base of the pocket first, and then we'll sew the strap on and then the flap on. Now that the front pocket is done, it's time to move on to hemming the wrists and ankles. This bit is really easy, so I just folded the fabric over and over again, and I'm going to stitch around the outside, leaving a little gap so that I can weave some elastic through. I made sure this elastic fits around my wrist before I cut it, and then after I weave it through, I will sew the ends of the elastic together and then close up that hole. And there it is, there is one wrist done, so we will do it the same to the other and move on to the legs. For the bottom hem of this red jumpsuit, I decided to just do a straight hem without any elastic so that it would fit over any boot that I was wearing. Finally, we are moving on to the black zipper. Now, I know if you don't sew a lot, zippers can be a little daunting, but trust me, they're not as hard as they seem. So this zipper is going to extend from the top of that collar that we sewed on pretty much down to where a zipper ends on a pair of jeans. And to sew on this zipper, we are going to start with sewing one side down like you see here. So your zipper head is going to be facing the fabric and you're going to line up both outside edges and sew them together. So to do that, we're going to put on a zipper foot. This isn't necessary, it just makes the sewing a lot easier because of that ridge on the zipper. And once you have that straight stitch done, we are going to flip it so that you do a straight stitch on the other side. So you're going to connect that other side, the open-ended side of the zipper, to the other side of your jumpsuit. I'm not the best with describing things, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing in the video. Once you've sewn down both sides of your zipper, it should be fully functional, so you should be able to zip it up and down. But just to make it nice and clean and to make sure it lays the way you want it to, we are going to top stitch all around the edge of that zipper. And there is the finished zipper. You can see it lays nice and flat and it looks super clean, beautiful, perfect. So this is where I stopped on the jumpsuit because I ran out of time. But there was two more elements that I could have added, which were belt loops, which would be really easy, and side thigh pockets, which would be the same process as that front chest pocket. Not super important elements if you ask me, so let's try on the costume. I mean, I think I covered all the basics. I think the chest pocket turned out perfect, and I love that the side pockets are so deep so that they could hold a lot if I need them to. I absolutely love how the neck bit turned out. 
I definitely think you'll be able to tell what character I am, even if you really haven't watched the show and you've just seen pictures of it. But anyways, that's the end of this video. So if you liked this jumpsuit tutorial, be sure to hit that like button. Comment down below how many people you think are going to be dressed up as Squid Game characters for this Halloween. Go on, tell me. Estimate a number in the comments down below. Also, share this video with somebody who's seen Squid Game and needs a costume this year. And please subscribe because I post every Friday after 3. Thank you for watching.